Yeah, I have like two more of these to record this week, assuming Nintendo still does a direct. And I do not want to waste time falling into frame in different ways just to say, yo, what up? Keely 3 continues with Summer Game Fest. And the show was alright. There's a lot of double-A announcements that you can't get incredibly hyped over, unless you like the people working on those games. But they did have some pretty big games, like what they opened with, Street Fighter 6. This trailer would have been a lot more fun if the entire roster didn't get leaked, but what are you going to do? The game still looks fun though. After that, they showed off a trailer for an Aliens game. I'm not incredibly invested in it. I'm only bringing it up because I was shocked that it was a dual stick shooter. Did not get that vibe from the CG portion of the trailer. And that brings up this year's theme at Summer Game Fest. Sci-fi games. Callisto Protocol made another showcase here. I think in my state of play video, I was calling it Calypso Protocol and didn't notice. Anyways, I really liked what they showed off here. I said previously that I'm excited for this game because I love Dead Space, but that gameplay trailer really hit it home that this was a Dead Space game. I was watching it and I was just getting more and more hyped. And considering the release date, this is probably going to be the last game I play and review before I do my cutoffs for Goaty. Much like what I did with Halo last year, I'm definitely very excited for that game now. I barely remember Witchfire from when they initially showed it off, but it's definitely one of those games that you see at these events and you think to yourself, I'm never seen this again. The dash made the shooting look really fun, but there was just something about this game that wasn't pulling me in. The only way I'm going to end up playing this game if a friend of mine recommends it to me and it's on Game Pass. I don't care about COD, so I'm not going to go into what they showed off for it. There is one thing in the COD segment that they did way too much throughout the whole presentation, and I really think they should cut it down for next year. There was a decent amount of time dedicated to devs talking. Every single time it happened, I just completely checked out. And based off of chat's reactions during some of them, I think a lot of people did. It seems like they don't have a lot of stuff for the full runtime, so they have to pad it out somehow. We didn't get a lot from Routine. It was a very short trailer. But Mick Gordon is always a plus. Those robot things, or whatever they were, looked great. The tech in general looked really neat in this trailer. I'm excited to get an actual look at this game later on. It caught me so off guard when The Rock showed up in his gym. I found this segment really funny because it just felt like a cameo. I'm kind of surprised it didn't have their logo in the bottom right corner of the screen. It just felt too laid back, you know? Another thing that surprised me was that Outriders still exists? Does anyone even play it? This better not be the most of Nintendo that we see during Keel E3. I know we're going to get a direct announcement way too late, but come on guys, hurry it up. I just find it really funny that in the past week, Nintendo has neglected to announce a Direct and really f***ed up the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 pre-order, but has released a PNG of Breath of the Wild Steak as a profile picture on Nintendo Switch. It's just so funny that the Xenoblade community is completely on fire right now and Nintendo is just like, don't worry guys. We got steak. A spiritual successor to StarCraft is really neat, mostly because Blizzard is probably never going to make an RTS ever again. America Arcadia's trailer somehow really pulled me in. I can't explain it, but something just made me down to play this game. I can't explain how f***ing shocked I was when it looked like Dead Island 2 was showing up here, especially because it looked way worse than the previous CG trailer. And I'm also confused how that immediately clicked in my mind. Like, I don't care about Dead Island at all. But one second in, I was like, is this Dead Island? And then Goats showed up, which explained why it looked worse. A new Goat Simulator. I didn't know there was a sequel, so I was surprised when I saw that this was the third one. And then my friend mentioned there wasn't a second one, and that they were just calling it Goat Simulator 3. Oh, that's funny. Someone already has a comparison between the two trailers. Midnight Sun showed up with another fun trailer. I need gameplay, guys. I know tactics gameplay isn't the sexiest around, but come on, you really need to show it here. October is a solid release date, though. Although Forspoken might lead to me neglecting this game. I honestly thought Neon White was already out. I don't know why. And considering its release date is like next week or something, I think I'm justified in my mistake. Because I'm a good student, I was watching Summer Game Fest in class, and my buddy beside me said, oh, this game's going to be really good, when Midnight Fight Express showed up. So I guess that's on my radar now. After that game, I think it took me a solid five or 10 minutes to write down another note. It was about the time between notes and, but hey, that rhythm shooter game still looks fun. The quarry did look interesting, but I don't think I'll end up playing it. I completely forgot that Saints Row reboot was a thing. 
despite the fact it was originally supposed to come out in March. I honestly might get this just to scratch the GTA 6 itch because that's probably not coming out anytime soon. That could be why most people pick this game up too. Just when I thought we were going to get through a Jeff Keighley event without a Left 4 Dead style game, Warhammer shows up. So close, but the amount we had here was a huge improvement from previous shows. Layers of Fear showed so many different settings, it kind of just hooked me in. Just a solid trailer that really got me interested in this game. Gotham Knights could be fun, but not showing combat from the player's perspective in a trailer is always a mistake. What's up with all these side views? Is it just shit? This makes me think the game is shit. Rounding up the last of the news, was The Last of Us. I never cared to play The Last of Us as multiplayer. It's not what I come to this series for, so I was just waiting for them to move on. I have no doubt in my mind that this show is going to be good. The voice actors making a cameo in the show is not a big enough announcement for Summer Game Fest. Shoutouts to my boy Pedro Pascal though. I know he's going to do such a great job as Joel. Please go see the unbearable weight of massive talent. It's really funny and him and Nick Cage are amazing in it. Fun fact, I had someone who worked on The Last of Us show comment on my video game adaptations video. And then they ended the show with The Last of Us Part 1 remake. Doing the Star Wars thing where they start numbering everything after it becomes a popular series. My feelings for this remake and Resident Evil 4 remake are exactly the same. The originals are still very playable and accessible. Even more so for The Last of Us. Show me why this remake needs to exist. Don't just show cutscenes and say how this power will help us realize our true vision for the game when it's not even a decade old. Show us how you're refining the gameplay and the story. Especially when we're getting a show, I don't care how pretty this remake looks because it's going to look worse than real life. It's not going to be the best looking version of this story. Just show the gameplay improvements. As someone who doesn't find the first game very replayable, I just need to see how they're improving the gameplay. I'm only thinking that because I find replayability very important when it comes to games. The PC launch is pretty f***ing big though, considering it's the most popular game Sony released in the last decade. And dude, it really sucks that they closed the show with something that got leaked like an hour before. Just deflates the last announcement when we knew about it at like 12. How I felt about the state of play more so represents how I feel about Summer Game Fest 2022. Apparently Sony said it was going to be mostly third parties and VR. I wish I heard that because that would have helped set my expectations. So the state of play is retroactively getting an 8 and this Summer Game Fest is getting a 7. Nothing too massive but it was a solid showcase for AA games. Imagine if the big opener and closer wasn't leaked. It definitely hurt the show. Do you agree? Think I'm an idiot? Comment down below. Dislike the video if everything I said got leaked beforehand, and subscribe for more bad content. Follow me on other platforms if you want. Take care, guys.